Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Necromanticer and the character you see before you is Igel, head sorcerer among the old Iron King's forces and the progenitor of quite a few of the pyromancies that can be found within the old Iron King DLC. I felt it rather fitting that I pick a character from the old Iron King DLC because my other two roleplay runs have actually fallen right in line with characters right out of the DLC cities. As it turns out, I've basically come to consider it canon that Faros was once a citizen of Sholva, given all the connections between his creations and the city of Sholva, and of course Faram is inextricably linked to Elam Lois and the land of Ferosa that the Ivory King comes from, so I found it very strange and lucky that those two correlations should come up, and thought that it might be fun to kind of complete the trifecta with role-playing a character from one of the, I mean, the final DLC in the Old Ivory, not Old Ivory, but the Old Iron King. And so, Igel was born. However, this isn't just going to be a regular role-play run. I've done two of those, and that's that's kind of been done to death at this point. This is going to be something a little bit special. This is going to be a run in first person. Yes, I found this mod while browsing the Dark Souls 2 subreddit a few days ago, and oh my goodness, has it been just the wonkiest thing. It really, really changes up the way you play, and it does it in a very, very simple manner. From what I can gather, the mod basically locks your camera at the zoom-in of either the binoculars or a bow, and so you can actually play out the whole game from this first-person perspective. It gives you a lot of really cool views, and it really changes up how you enter combat, because the way your camera is facing no longer allows you to kind of fight unlocked. I mean, it does sort of, but fighting unlocked is much more difficult because you can't view the angle of your character in order to properly get a fix on things. And it also really messes with how you would normally uh, fight like certain bosses and whatnot because everything you do is no longer connected to your camera. The camera is now a third entity that handles on its own. Even when you lock on, that only changes the way your character is facing. The camera still faces its regular way. So if I lock on to this enemy here, I can still turn completely 180 and still be locked on to him. My character will be facing him the entire time, but the camera is under my direct control and will not do anything unless I say so. And so this is going to be a little bit difficult, but I'm pretty sure I can manage it. Just to see if it was feasible, I tried clearing through the Force of the Fallen Giants in first person mode, and I managed that okay. Though it was slightly more difficult, things like jumps are far more difficult to execute properly, and you just really have to be paying a lot of extra attention to where your character is because you no longer have the visual cues showing you exactly where you're standing. Let's get the Dark Knight Stone and the White Ring. Absolutely worthless, both of those. Actually, come to think of it, the Dark Knight Stone might come in handy a little bit later because I'm going to be making a sort of hex dex build, but aside from that, the White Ring is actually one of the absolute worst items you can get from your petrified something. I'm gonna head just right on through to Majula and get on with things because I don't want to dawdle in the things betwixt for too long, but goodness, really playing from first person completely changes how you come at the game because a lot of the tactics that you might use when you can have a third person camera, such as backstabs, and uh, kind of fighting in multiple directions, changing your directionality in order to combat foes coming at you from multiple angles are exponentially more difficult when you have both a slow camera and only a field of view coming out in front of your character. 
it is technically possible to do backstabs and they will work to a certain extent but they're just so much more difficult to pull off because in order to do them properly you either have to go completely from muscle memory and hope that you connect or you have to start turning your camera before you're actually behind them so that you can line it up properly once you get there. Um, I'm considering killing off Mullen here, but I, I think I'll let him live for now. He's done nothing wrong, and I don't think I'm going to need the extra acceleration that his clothes would give me, so I'm, I'm happy to just go about the game at my regular pace. The eventual plan for this character is to roll up a very spear, pokey, heavy hex dex build, and I think that that would exemplify Igil kind of the best. Definitely going to throw in some pyromancies in there, but all the sorcerer type enemies that you actually encounter in the old Iron King DLC have a mix of both dark and faith, and Igil was a sorcerer, and he made pyromancies, so I'm just going to be throwing in every sort of magic I can find, basically. Admittedly, the Bandit is one of the worst starting classes for mages, but I had to pick something that had access to the bow right out of the bat, and so the Bandit was pretty much my only option. That being said, it works very nicely in the early game, gives you a lot of powerful weapons and stats, and it also works really nicely because it starts out with the highest decks out of any of the... Uh, kind of combat classes, I would say. The Swordsman is... I, I just don't rate the class in general. But the Swordsman can do some good things. I think the Bandit is tied with the Knight as one of the best starting classes in general. And so it's probably going to work out really nicely that I had to use him anyways. Tag the Bonfire here. Ah. The, the real trick about this first person mod is that you have to really manage your spacing. Unless you're looking directly at your feet, it's very difficult to kind of keep in mind where exactly your character model is because you're just not used to this perspective. You sometimes misjudge spacing. Jumps are the absolute dickens because you have to really time those close to the edge and that's just a very difficult thing to manage when you're working from this first person perspective. That being said, I kind of like the way the camera controls. You can point it in whatever direction you want, and it's very slow and kind of cinematic, which makes sense because it's the same camera that both the bow and the binoculars use. But at the same time, it can kind of mess with combat. It's not the easiest thing to do. And that's really going to be the main struggle in this playthrough, is managing my character location and combat with the locked first-person perspective. Just to show you kind of how blind those jumps have to be, that jump right there actually killed me my first time through. And so I was kind of hoping that I was going to make it, and luckily I managed to pull that off, but it's definitely a risk. And trickier jumps, like I'm going to imagine the uh, dull ember jump, are going to be very difficult to pull off first time through. And you can already see that I missed the spacing there with that first enemy, and that's just something that's going to come with the territory here. The spacing, especially on weapons with a short reach like this hand axe, is, is incredibly difficult to maintain properly because if you actually get to the right spacing, you kind of feel like you're far too up close and you're kind of fighting in a suboptimal position because you're right in the enemy's face, but that's honestly what you should be doing because you've got a short weapon and... Oh! Ugh. Arrows are a lot more intimidating as well because they're just coming right at your face as opposed to kind of in front of your character like they normally would be. As you can see, I just messed up that sprint... those... both of those sprinting attacks coming in on these guys because I can't quite judge the distance properly. And I think that's going to be an interesting... Oh dear. I think that's going to be an interesting handicap to kind of play around with as I'm clearing through here. Grab all the loot here. And now it's time to head up and let's let's equip my 
stuff before I head on out any further. I do have a bow that I could use to cheese this uh, hide knight, but I have a particularly special method of cheese that I'm going to pull out because I would not... Um, I, I don't have faith in myself to fight the Hade Knight with the first-person camera, especially because I'm still not incredibly used to it. I'm still definitely adapting to it and kind of trying to get into the swing of things because, as I said, I'm trying to go into this pretty much blind as to how it's going to play out. The only thing I did was clear through the force to the... Oh, you see, that jump right there would just be easy as pie in the regular game, but I managed to muck that up, so let's try that again. I did go through the Forest of the Fallen Giants just to make sure this run is feasible in the first place, but aside from that, we're experiencing this together. That was a much better jump. Again, it's very difficult to see your feet, kind of judge your character location, but I'm confident that I can manage it, especially if I give myself some time to kind of acclimate. Let's get up this ladder here and take out the three hollows up the second ladder. Then I'll drop down, take down the sleeping hollow, and then it's time to cheese the Hade Knight. And I have a kind of special method that I've been, that I haven't uh, shown off just yet, and I really think that it's going to do well for me. There we go. Oh, and he gives us a drop, just a life gem, but that's nice. I kind of found myself opening up to the ideas of life gems. In the base game, I had a very big problem of just never using them. And I, to some extent, still do. But I think the DLCs really opened my eyes to the idea of just using them as a regular heal. I found myself using them quite a bit more, and it honestly benefited my playstyle. It allowed me to keep going and clear through most areas in just a single run, and since that's how I like to take things on, I found it worked quite nicely for me. It's just a matter of getting outside my comfort space and forcing myself to use consumables, because I'm usually very conservative about those things. I want to keep everything I can, just in case I need it later, all the way up to the point where I end up never using it because I was saving it the entire time. Now then, of course, your first uh, blow should always come out from a crit from the dagger, especially if you're a dex character. Oh, come on. There we go. Get him to stand up. You can see what I mean about backstabs, how this is going to be much more difficult. There we go. <laughs> Camera gets a little bit wonky at that, but once you've done that, you can pull out this yellow quartz shield and then use the shield bash attack. It should keep you pretty much completely safe, and it also staggers him out most of the time. Oh, unless you're n mismanaging spacing like that. But I think if I just rush right in his face, I can get it. Oh, dear. You know, this worked much, much better the first time I tried it. There we go. Bop, bop. And once you've got your two hits, roll away. Bop. Do I have the stone ring on? I think I do. I'm really curious as to why this isn't staggering him anymore, because it used to stagger. That was a good... Tr oh, there we go. Get right in his face. This is what I'm used to happening. Just stagger him repeatedly. There we go. One more bash should take him out. Come on. There we go. Well, that was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated, but it worked out. And, you know, the, the method is flawed, but I think it's still more useful than trying to take him on with just my hand axe in first-person view. That would have been completely dreadful. So let's switch back out to a real weapon and head on over to the next bonfire. Only have a few enemies to clear in the interim, and they shouldn't pose too much of a threat now that I've cleared the Hide Knight. Oh, dear. You can see what I mean about the camera being difficult. I can fight unlocked like I can swing backwards, but the time it takes to actually move my camera there is a lot longer than it regularly would be because I'm playing in first person. Bash this stuff to grab my wood bolts just in case I want to use the crossbow later. 
You never know. And this guy. Sprinting attack? There we go. You definitely have issues whenever you need to pull a sprinting attack because the spacing is just incredibly difficult to pull off properly. Throwing knife this guy once. Can I get the second one? Oh, I can. Beautiful. And now I can rush right up on up on this archer and completely with the spacing. Goodness. As I said before, and we'll probably be bringing up a lot in this playthrough, the first person mode changes how you have to approach combat. You have to get a whole new sense of where your character is, and fighting unlocked kind of helps a lot because it allows you to angle yourself properly, even when your camera isn't necessarily facing the right direction. You can lock on, and that will keep you faced a certain direct way, but when dealing with multiple foes, that's just completely infeasible because you're going to be locked on to a single one of them and facing him the entire time and all the rest of them are going to creep up on you and kind of bow your, your backside, as it were. Let's tag this bonfire just because I don't want anything bad happening while I'm out and about up here. I will be talking to her shortly, but... There are a few things I need to do first. I want to break open this door. Come on. There we go. And grab all the loot up here. And then before I actually talk to her, I'm going to head back to Majula and handle some business. Come on. It's so difficult to hit enemies like that because you just cannot angle the hand axe to hit in that kind of direction. And that's pretty much most of what I'm going to be having to figure out as I continue on is what sorts of, I mean, how am I actually going to use my weapons to properly hit the opponents? I have an idea. The plan, at least, is going to be to use spears so that I can get a very directional and long attack in whatever direction that I want to be swinging because it can be quite difficult to kind of judge your distance and so having the extra reach of a spear should help me out quite a bit. It also kind of works with the whole Igel cosplay in that the Pilgrim Spontoon is actually a spear catalyst that can be found within the Old Iron King's Broom Tower and acts as a catalyst for both sorceries and dark, and so it kind of makes sense that Igel would use a spear. What I'm going to be doing right now is killing Benhart. This is going to give me a few extra bonus souls to start out the game with, and give me access to one of the strongest small shields that you can get in the early game. Oh dear, spacing. Ugh. And now I just need to back off and come right back at him. Benhart's Parma is a very powerful physical defense small shield, and it has those wonderful small shield parry frames that I'm going to be looking for to deal with certain enemies that might be a bit more difficult if I couldn't backstab them. So being able to use the front kind of backstab version of a parry should help a, quite a bit. So I need to kill him, and as I said, it's going to give me souls, but it also unlocks his Parma to be bought from Melentia for 5,000. And that's going to take care of something I always struggle with in the beginning of the game as well, is what exactly should I buy from Melentia in order to access the uh, Silver Serpent Ring plus one? Because you need to spend 10,000 souls, and the only, quote, mandatory buys from her inventory are the uh, key to Lenegrast's hut over there, as well as the uh, Ferris Lockstone that can be used in the Force of the Fallen Giants. Now that I'm back in the Force of the Fallen Giants, I think this is going to be where I cut the episode. Next time, I'm going to head down into the pit over there, clear that out, grab the souls, grab the... Uh, fire Longsword, which should act as a very nice sweeping weapon, and then come back to Melentia, spend all my souls, grab a very wonderful shield, 
and kind of wrap things up. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave me a bit of feedback or comments below. I'd love it if you could like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and have a great day.